Hi, uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, driving an inductive load uh, using a transistor and some of the things you have to, to look out for. So, uh, in this demonstration I'll be using a, a, a plus 5 volt supply. It's actually four double A's which are nearly dead so um, it's only, only going to be about 5 volts. Uh, we're going to be using a very small electric motor we're going to represent that here in our schematic with uh, just the inductor symbol. And then that's going to be going into a uh, bipolar junction transistor. Uh, specifically, it's a 2N2222 in our case. And I'll have a current limiting resistor, which we'll probably have. And this generally applies to MOSFETs, BJTs whether NPN or PNP. Uh, this will be a NPN. So we'll have our little arrow there. And I want to be using a just an Arduino as a pulse generator uh, to kind of drive this uh, this motor load. But I want I want to show uh, two examples. First will be uh, just this just this straight uh, example. And the problem that uh, that you'll run into. I know I've run into it plenty of times before I knew this. Uh, when the transistor comes on, uh, turns on and allows current to flow in this direction, this inductor will uh, build up a magnetic field uh, such that when the transistor is turned off, and it'll turn off very rapidly, uh, a, a large voltage will be generated at this point. And that can be enough uh, to damage this transistor. Uh, and, and, and very very quickly. So in this uh, in this demonstration, I'll show how this will become a, a, a voltage that you would not not generally expect. So uh, after I do that demonstration, we'll then add uh, what's called a free wheeling diode, which will be over here. And what this does is it allows the current to continue along this path. So when the uh, transistor is turned off, this large voltage that gets generated at this point uh, will be higher than at this point. So current will flow through this reverse bios, uh, reverse biased uh, diode uh, towards uh, the positive rail. So and that will just circulate until the energy is dissipated. Okay. Uh, in order, since I don't have a scope, in order to kind of demonstrate this high voltage, I'll be adding another diode out here uh, and a capacitor connected to ground. And this is where I'll be attaching my uh, uh, multimeter. This will allow me to see what that higher voltage uh, is at this point. This is where I'll be. I'll be trying to measure this, but if I, without using this this kind of uh, capacitor and diode to capture the peak uh, voltage, I, I wouldn't see it. I would just see on, on the scope or on the on the multimeter just a, a very small uh, a small voltage, probably just the, the supply voltage. So I want to bring that uh, I want to bring down that circuit. Uh, and remember, it will be missing this uh, this free will dial here, and we'll see uh, what the voltages are. So we'll bring this down. You can see this is just uh, four double A's. Uh, these wires all connect together just to show, just to start the motor up. It connects the uh, Arduino pulses to the um, uh, base of the transistor. meter over here. Turn it on. And you can see I've got uh, five volts uh, max output at the moment. I'll connect these up. Motor's running. And you see that I'm getting over 40 volts um, that's hitting that transistor. And considering that transistor can only handle maybe 60 volts or so, uh, that could be a real problem if these were fully charged batteries or that motor were a bit larger and 
could handle more current. So we'll put in the freewheeling diode into our little circuit here. Try to get it in the correct orientation. Plop it in there. And now we see 5.8 volts, which is something that this uh, uh, transistor can very easily, very easily handle. Uh, it's well, well within its, uh, within its range. So that's what's going on. That's what I kind of wanted to show you because if you were like me when you first got started, you uh, uh, just tried to hook up a motor and use the transistor as a switch, and you were really curious as to why a uh, transistor that could handle multiple amps. Um, was just exploding on you when you were just trying to drive something that was in the milliamp range. So hopefully that's been uh, helpful and uh, useful and I uh, hope you guys leave some comments. Thank you. Bye-bye.